here with Simon Kenton football coach Jeff Marksberry. Um, coach, you guys are getting ready to go into the playoffs, and you guys have been to, I guess, uh, two straight regional finals, correct? Correct. And um, ranked uh, fourth in the state in the AP poll. I mean, it hasn't always been quite this easy, or you haven't made it quite made it look quite this easy. I mean, when you first started here, you guys went through some through some tough years. I mean. How do you even compare where the program is right now compared to, say, eight, nine years ago? I don't think there is a comparison, but, you know, one of the things that uh, that I think about when I look back on those days is, you know, our kids were very hardworking kids, even though they weren't very successful. And I think they laid the foundation of, you know, of kind of what we have today in terms of, of work ethic and, you know, the commitment level that we have from, from our players. I, some of those guys, you know, going back to Jeff Hardy and, uh, those guys that were on, you know, three and seven and two and eight teams, um, you know, there were some pretty, there were some good football players at, at the time that we just didn't have en enough. You know, we had two or three good players, we just didn't have enough to, to surround them with, and, and those guys, you know, really laid a foundation for us. Yeah, the, um, you know, obviously when when you when you become successful, you kind of get a whole new set of problems. Were, were were you criticized more back then, you think, or now? Oh, I think it's about the same. I mean, everybody's an expert. We still hear plenty of, plenty of criticisms. You know, there are people out there that, that think I'm an idiot. There are people out there that, you know, that, that think the opposite of that. So I think it, 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 it comes and goes every year. You know, it's, it's always about the same yeah. um, with, uh, you know, with, with people, with the fans in the stands or with the people in the community or whoever. I, I think it's about the same. But it was harder because I think you heard more of it when we were 2-8. and eight. Yeah. Do you ever start to believe it when you're 2-8? and eight? Yeah, it's tough sometimes to, to get up every day and to and to fight through that stuff uh, when you're you know when you're two and eight and you do look at yourself and say is it something I'm doing wrong or is it you know is it something that we're doing wrong as a staff and and you know a lot of times there are answers to that 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 hey we could do this differently or we can do this better because I you know I think that we've taken some time at the end of the year each year and we evaluate what we've done and and what we need to do differently, and I think that helps. Yeah. This year also uh, has been kind of special. You had your, you and your wife had your, your second daughter. How is uh, having a newborn around change the, the season? Uh, I'm exhausted. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm always tired at this point in the year, and I think everybody is, but, um, it, it you know, just having her on my mind and having extra things to do to go get our other daughter when my wife would have picked up, you know, Anna or, you know, my wife would have taken her somewhere, um, it's just there's there's just another level of of responsibility and another level of things to do. We've been blessed, uh, you know. She's a great Chloe's been a great child so far. Uh, my mother-in-law is in town from Nashville, been staying with us for a little bit to help out. So that's a that's a, a blessing. Yeah, the um, uh, you guys you have the, the the good fortune of having a starting quarterback who, who who's been the starter now for about two and a half years. I mean, uh, Chad Lawrence. I mean, how much when he's been in the system as long as he has, and, and you seems like you guys trust him as much as he does, how how much autonomy does he have? I mean, when when you guys send a play in, does he kind of is he allowed to to, to change things? And how often does he if he if he is allowed? He is allowed to change things. Um, you know, he doesn't have one hundred percent autonomy. There are times when he's checked us out of things that were good, yeah. and he checked us into things that were worse. But um, you know, he's he's probably right. Eight out of ten times when he makes a check, yeah. and because of that, we give him you know ninety five percent flexibility. You know, yeah. if he if he sees something, um, he's done a really good job over the course of his career of understanding coverages and learning coverages and the strengths and weaknesses of coverages. And I think he's got a great relationship with you know some of his receivers that you know Zach Carroll's been a starter with him for for three years. Ryan Winkler's been a starter with him for three years, and he understands their abilities and, and what they can do so with that relationship that he has with those guys you know it's he we, we let him kind of you know make some make some uh, some calls at the line of scrimmage and and check us out of things see uh see the best player in northern kentucky um if not he's awful close to it i put i mean you know is there anybody better yeah. no but are there people as good yes yeah well how much um satisfaction do you guys as a staff and, and the, the guys as a team even um, get out of this season you guys have had two great runs with Miles Simpson who was one of the most dominant players in the in the state you guys are on a similar path right now without him you know obviously you still miss him but I mean how much satisfaction do you get out of you know um, proving that you guys aren't a, aren't a one-trick pony I guess a, a huge amount you know we, we had to re completely rebuild our offensive line 
They've gotten better every week. We didn't have much of a run game earlier in the year, and I, people would probably argue that we don't now, but we are we are better at running the football. You know, if you look at our, our run game statistics the last four or five weeks of the season, they are, they are definitely better. Um, and, and it's been a lot of fun kind of re- seeing those guys grow and develop that offensive line into their own into their own unit and gel a little bit, and just seeing our, our offensive guys, you know, who stepped up and who took the place of some of those numbers, you know, that, that Miles put up. Defensively, we knew we were going to be a pretty talented, pretty good yeah. football team, yeah. um, and, they, and that's kind of held true for the season. But it's, it's been very enjoyable seeing the success continue. I'm guessing you watched um, Ryle last week, your, your district rival upset Highlands. What were your impressions that game? You know what? Actually, we didn't get to watch it. We had parent-teacher conference that night, so we practiced at 7.30. Uh, so we did not see we did not see any of the any of the game. Now, a couple of my coaches DVR'd it. You know, I, I sent Bryson a text that night saying congratulations, you know, great win, great win for your program. You know, I'm happy for, for, for Bryson. He's worked very hard to, to, to meet that challenge. And, uh, you know, I, I, my hat's off to, to, to Ryle and what they've done. Um, it was a, I understand it was a great football game. The um, you're coaching at a time where, where it seems like every year there's there's more and more innovations at every level. I mean, you look at the game and it's it's very very different than the game that that the way it looked when you started coaching, even when you were a head, when you started becoming a head coach. Who do you like watching? I mean, who do you, who do you look at on TV or you know at any level and say that's that's fun to watch, that's neat, that's something that that I would like to be able to do. Uh, when I first started coaching, I loved Thursday night whack games. You know, those, <laughs> yeah. those BYUs and, and Boise's and some of those guys. I still like watching Boise State. I like watching Nevada. Um, you know, some of those guys are in the pistol and that and, and run the spread. Um, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of our stuff has has been taken from from some of those places. I mean, coach, you know, coaches borrow from everybody. Um, and I, I honestly, I enjoy watching high school. You know, high school films. There's Sometimes you'll catch a Fox game on, or I think there's been some games from Texas and Florida that have been uh, televised here recently, and, and like watching those, you know, just to see what you can pick up from from those teams. Yeah, you guys have uh, some some pretty new facilities here, uh, in, including um, you know the the high school or the uh, the indoor the indoor facility over here. What when, when you guys get into the playoffs, uh, say a couple weeks down the road, if you guys are still still alive and it starts getting really cold, I mean, and the guys want to go inside. Are you going to tell them, yeah, let's do it, or are you going to say, you know, you got to play in it, you got to prepare in it? Uh, I think it'll be a little bit of both. I think there are things that we can get done in the indoor facility that you know that we'll use it for, but we'll also be outside to do Pascali and you know those types of things that we need the entire the entire field for. Uh, I know one day last week it was really rainy and cold. I'm trying to think of what day it was, and one of my one of the players said, hey, we have an indoor place we can go, and I went, oh, we're going to stay out of here. Yeah, so yeah. They, they constantly remind me of it, um, but we'll, we'll use both. You know, we're fortunate enough to have turf out both turf at both places, so, you know, out on the game field and in here, so we'll, we'll use both of them, and, um, you know, and, and hopefully we're, we're still playing then. Definitely. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you.